What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to verify trig identities. So here are some helpful formulas that we're going to need, and let's get started. So let's go through six examples, and we're going to verify trig identities. And for this first question here, we're going to start with the left-hand side and show it equals the right-hand side. Because for these questions, you usually want to start with the side that's more complicated and see if you can condense it to something simple. So we're going to multiply this out. We have 1 times 1 is 1. And then we have 1 times minus sine x is minus sine x. Then we distribute the sine x. We get sine x times 1 is sine x. And then sine x times negative sine x is minus sine squared x. So minus sine x plus sine x cancels out, leaving us with just 1 minus sine squared x. So the reason why this worked out so nice is that we multiplied a binomial and its conjugate. And one thing to note here is anytime you multiply a plus b times a minus b, this is going to work out to a squared minus b squared. So the shortcut here would just be to say 1 squared minus sine squared. But I just wanted to show all the steps. Now at this step here, it may not be super obvious, but we can actually conclude here 1 minus sine squared x equals cosine squared x. And this ends the verification. And the way that we're able to say this, so in case that's not obvious, from the formulas before, we said uh, sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So in a sense here, if I want to just get cosine squared x alone, I could subtract sine squared x on both sides. So that Pythagorean identity tells us that cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. But as you do more of these examples, when you see 1 minus sine squared x, you'll know to just replace it with cosine squared x and vice versa. If you had 1 minus cosine squared x, you have the option of switching that out with sine squared x. So here's another simple one. We have tan x divided by secant x equals sine x. So we want to verify this. So what we could do for this one, we're going to start with the left-hand side because it's more complicated and show that it equals the simple right-hand side. So we're starting with tan x over secant x. And for questions like this, it's helpful to use the identities for tangent. So tangent x is the same thing as sine x over cosine x. And the identity for secant x is 1 over cosine x. And when you divide fractions, the technique we use is that we keep the fraction on top. We keep, we change the operation from division to multiplication, and then we flip the fraction on bottom. So when we multiply these two fractions, notice the matching factors. Cosine over cosine cancels out, leaving us with just sine x divided by 1, which is just sine x. So this verifies the second one. Now for this one, notice the left-hand side is definitely more simple than the right-hand side. So this time around, we're going to start with the right-hand side and show that it equals the left-hand side. So we're starting with 1 over 1 minus sine x. And I'm going to leave a space here. We're going to have minus 1 over 1 plus sine x. And the reason I'm leaving a space is that we want to combine these two fractions into 1. So the first fraction, we're going to multiply by 1 plus sine x. And then we have 1 plus sine x on top, 1 plus sine x on bottom. The reason we're doing this is that we want these two fractions to have common denominators. Because the, the only way you could combine fractions by subtraction or addition is when they have matching denominators. So we have this, 1 over 1 plus sine x. We're multiplying by 1 minus sine x over 1 minus sine x. But notice the first question we did, we did 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x, and that gave us 1 minus sine squared x. So once again, this is just multiplying a binomial and its conjugate. So we know this should simplify nice. And then we have 1 plus sine x on top, because we're doing 1 times 1 plus sine x. And now we're going to have minus. On top here, we have 1 times 1 minus sine x, which gives us this. But once again, when we multiply 1 plus sine x by 1 minus sine x, that's going to give us 1 minus sine squared x. And now from here, what we can do, because they have matching denominators, these two fractions, we could actually subtract. But a very common mistake here that I notice is that when you subtract fractions, especially when you're subtracting a fraction that has more than two, well, more than one term, if it has two or more terms, you have to make sure you put the numerator in parentheses like this. So that way you don't forget to distribute the negative through. And then we have 1 minus sine squared x on bottom like this. So now we'll go ahead and close this out. What we could say here is we have 1 plus sine x. And then when we distribute this negative, we're going to send this through. This is going to work out to minus 1 and then plus sine x. And this is over 1 minus 
sine squared x. So notice 1 minus 1 cancels out, and then sine x plus sine x is 2 sine x. And then, as we did before, 1 minus sine squared x we could replace with cosine squared x like this. But now when we get to this step, think about what are we trying to show this is equal to? We want to show that this is equal to 2 tangent x secant x. So now I'm going to use the fact that when you have fractions with just multiplication and division, fractions are very flexible in the sense that we could do 2 sine x over cosine x, cosine x, like this. And I could take that fraction and I could stretch it apart. I could say that this is 2 times sine x over cosine x times, and then that extra cosine x I could just separate as 1 over cosine x. The reason being that this cosine x is in the denominator. And notice if I multiply these three things back together, it's going to bring us back to this line. But now I could go ahead and use the identity. We have 2 times the identity for sine x over cosine x is tangent x. And the identity for 1 over cosine x is secant x. So note what we were trying to show here. We're trying to show that this equation checks out. And the left-hand side was 2 tangent x secant x. So at this step, this is going to wrap up the verification for this question. For question four, we're trying to show this identity is true. And notice on the right-hand side, we have the difference of two fractions. And on the left-hand side, we have just one fraction. So for this one, I'm going to start out with the right-hand side and show that the right-hand side equals the left-hand side. So we have this here. And for something like this, there's not just one nice approach. Sometimes you'll try something and you'll hit a dead end. And then you have to go back to the beginning and try something else. So for this one, the first thing I try to do here is I try to swap out secant x with 1 over cosine x. And that way, if I do 1 over 1 over cosine x, that's going to simplify to just cosine x. So we're going to have 1 over cosine x minus cosine x like this. Okay, So when we have uh, this expression here, we could simplify it to just cosine. So then from that step, what I did was I have 1 over cosine x minus cosine x. And I'm going to call this cosine x over 1 because the goal here is to have common denominators. So the second fraction needs to be changed. So we need to multiply it by cosine x over cosine x so that both of these now have the same denominator. And now this is 1 over cosine x minus, and on top you have cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And then this is over cosine x. So I found this one to be a bit of a strange identity, but you know what, whatever we have to make it match, that's like what the task is. So we're trying to show that this is equal to tan x over cosecant x. So I'll kind of just write that off to the side here, that we're trying to show that it's equal to tan x over cosecant x. And let's just make sure I'm actually writing the correct thing. So yeah, tan x over cosecant x, that's our target. Remember, at no point could I assume this is true. I have to show that this is equal to this. So now what we could do is we could combine these fractions, we have 1 minus cosine squared x over cosine x. And then from here, what I notice is 1 minus cosine squared is the same thing as sine squared. So I can make the substitution and call this sine squared x over cosine x. And I think I'm starting to see it now, that this is the same thing as I could call this sine x over cosine x times sine x like this. So the reason why I want to separate this is I'm noticing sine x over cosine x, that's equal to tangent. But now how do I get this sine x here on the side to match cosecant x? So this is where things get a little bit wacky. So we have sine x over cosine x, but instead of calling sine x just sine x, I'm going to call it 1 over 1 over sine x. So as bizarre as that step is, the inspiration of that step is that the 1 over sine x here is going to swap out to become cosecant. So that way, in the next line, I have sine x over cosine x is equal to tangent x. And now I have times, tangent x times 1 over. And now 1 over sine x is the same thing as cosecant x. So now I could say that this is equal. Tangent x times 1 over cosecant x is equal to tangent x over cosecant x. So although it would have looked nicer to just say tangent x sine x, the goal here was to show that the original identity checked out, and this was the target, tangent x over cosecant x. For the fifth question, we have this trig identity, and we're going to start with the left-hand side because we have two fractions that we want to combine into a single expression here. 
So we're starting with 1 minus cosine x over sine x, and then I'll leave a space. We have plus sine x over 1 minus cosine x. So what we need to do is we need matching denominators. So the first fraction needs to be multiplied by 1 minus cosine x on top and bottom. And the second fraction needs to have a factor of sine x on, on the bottom. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by sine x. And now we can combine stuff. And I'll go ahead and make a little bit of space. So and that went back too far. So hang on. So this is equal to the first fraction is going to be 1 minus cosine x squared like this. A little bit of a trap would be to say 1 minus cosine squared because we're doing 1 minus cosine x times itself, so the whole thing is being squared. And then on bottom, we have sine x times 1 minus cosine x. And then we're going to be adding, we have sine x times sine x is sine squared x. And then we have, once again, sine x times 1 minus cosine x. Okay, so yeah, that just fits here. And now in the next line, what we're going to do is we're going to expand that first fraction, 1 minus cosine x times itself. That would tell us to do 1 times 1, and then we'd have 1 times minus cosine x is minus cosine x. And then yeah, if I write it out like this, like I'll just write it in this section here, this little space. Notice I'm doing 1 minus cosine x times 1 minus cosine x. So what we just did was 1 times 1. We did 1 times minus cosine x, but now we're doing minus cosine x times 1 is minus cosine x. And then minus cosine x times minus cosine x becomes plus cosine squared x. So that's that first fraction. And then we'll just go ahead and combine everything all at once. And now we have plus sine squared x over this denominator sine x times 1 minus cosine x. All right, so since our fractions have matching denominators now, we'll just combine it into one. And we expanded this all in one step. But now we want to group things together. And notice what we have here. We have cosine squared x. So this piece here, the if we look at this part here, the cosine squared x plus sine squared x, that piece is going to equal 1. So in the next line, we could call this 1 minus, and then minus cosine minus cosine becomes minus 2 cosine x. And then that trailing piece, plus cosine squared plus sine squared, is equal to 1. And this is over sine x times 1 minus cosine x. So remember, the goal is to show that this is all equal to 2 cosecant x. So now let's go ahead and combine a little bit more. So we have 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have 2 minus 2 cosine x over, and we have sine x times 1 minus cosine x. And it doesn't seem like we accomplished much, but we could factor out a 2 on top, and we have 1 minus cosine x. And then on bottom, we're left with sine x times 1 minus cosine x. And now here, these are going to cancel out, and we're left with 2 over sine x. But notice, 2 over sine x is the same exact thing as 2 cosecant x. Reason being, the definition of cosecant is 1 over sine x. So if you were to do 2 times 1 over sine x, that would give you 2 cosecant x. And that's going to verify this question here. All right, for the last question here, this one is definitely a bit insane. So we're trying to show this identity is true. And we're starting with this side because this side is definitely more complicated than the right side. So with tan x plus tan y, what I want to do is I'm going to rewrite this. So we have tan x plus tan y. And this is over cotangent x plus cotangent y. So we're going to rewrite this as sine x over cosine x. That's the first term, plus, And then we'd have sine y over cosine y. And then this is all over, we'd have cotangent of x. And we'll just do this all at once. But cotangent of x, and that just destroyed everything, so we'll rewrite this, is equal to cosine x over sine x. And then we have plus cotangent of y is the same thing as cosine of y over sine y. So this fraction is an absolute mess. So what I would want to do here is get rid of all of these denominators. I want to get rid of cosine x, cosine y, sine x, sine y. So as bizarre as this step may seem, we're going to multiply by all four of these denominators on top and bottom. So we're going to multiply by sine x, sine y, and then we'd multiply by cosine x, cosine y. So we're doing this on top and bottom. And you'll see that this is actually going to work out. So 
There's a lot to multiply out. And the goal is to show it's equal to tan x tan y. So in the next line here, if we actually go through with this, notice that the first fraction, and this is going to be a nightmare to write out, but we're going to need all, all this space here. So we'll go ahead and make ourselves some space. So we have four things being multiplied by each of these fractions. So we have sine x times, and then we have sine x, sine y, and this is an absolute nightmare to write. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed through this part. Okay, so we just pay attention to what I just did here. All of these four fractions were multiplied by sine x, sine y, cosine x, cosine y. So you can see the denominator cosine x, the second denominator cosine y, and then we have the third, denom third denominator sine x, fourth denominator sine y. So then what do we do from here? So first we're going to need space. But we have cosine x over cosine x canceling. Then we're going to have cosine y over cosine y canceling. We'll have sine x over sine x canceling and we'll have sine y over sine y canceling. So this makes the fraction just a little bit simpler. So we'll go ahead and write this out. Okay, from this step, what we wanna do is find matching factors on top and bottom. So notice on top, we have between both of these, we look at the first two terms on top. There's a common sine x that could be factored out. So we have this sine x and this sine x. And then we look for any other matches. And notice here we also have a sine y that we could take out. So we could take out a sine y. And then we look for anything else. So so far we took out sine x, sine y. And it looks like for now we look for cosine. But notice cosine y, this is cosine x. So now we just write the leftovers. So if we take out sine x, sine y, we're left with sine x cosine y plus, and once again, we take out sine x, sine y, so we're left with sine y cosine x. Okay, so notice all we did there was just factor. And now we're doing the same thing on bottom. And this part, I just have to be a little bit careful. So we look to see if there's any matches. So we have a cosine x, cosine x that matches. So we could take out a cosine x. So notice, yeah, this is the term here that's matching. We have cosine x, cosine x. On top, we took out a sine x from both of these, and we took out a sine y. So these are the terms that popped out. And it doesn't matter which one in particular we took out. But either way, we have sine x, cosine y left, and then sine y, cosine x. And now for the denominator here, we're taking out a cosine x. And then we look, is there a common sine y? And there's not. So we, we're going to skip to the next one. Cosine x we already took out, but cosine y does show up for both of them. So we can take out a cosine y. And now we just write the leftovers. We have sine y times cosine x plus, and then we're left with sine x cosine y. But if you look at what's left here, notice these are just flipped by commutativity of addition. The factor on top and the factor on bottom are the same. So you have sine x cosine y uh, here and here. So we have sine x, sine x cosine y, sine x cosine y, and then we have sine y cosine x, sine y cosine x. So these could actually just cancel out all the stuff left here. And now notice what we're left with. We have sine x over cosine x and sine y over cosine y. So I could separate. First, we'll just write out the leftovers. We have these two left on top, and we have these two left on bottom. So this could be separated as sine x over cosine x times sine y over cosine y. And now just know the identity for sine over cosine is tangent. So we have tangent x times tangent y, which is exactly what we were trying to show all the way in the beginning way long ago. See, we're trying to show this is equal to tan x, tan y. And that's exactly what we wound up here. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on verifying trig identities. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.